Wow, I am still drying up my tears, but I think I'm ready to talk about episode 46 from Tropical Rouge Precure. Hello everyone, it's Lel, and we're finally gonna discuss the last Tropical Rouge Precure episode. What a ride it has been. Even though this was the episode to close the whole story, in this video I'm obviously going to focus on episode 46 only, and videos talking about the season as a whole are coming in the future. So before I start talking about the episode, I want to point out that Tropical Rouge is a season that always tries to make you laugh. No matter what's going on, no matter how much drama there is, something that will lighten up the mood will be there. And this episode proved it so many times, which was a great thing because I couldn't stop the tears from falling in so many scenes, and that helped a little. And this is coming from someone who loves drama. I love me some drama. The episode started with the girls transforming, which was an indication we wouldn't have a fighting scene, and it was a great choice. It would add nothing to this episode, since the Tropical Rouge regular fights haven't been good. The first scene was super funny, nonetheless, I loved it. So we start the episode with a dramatic scene of Among Us Manatsu going back to the room before Laura notices her. And that was supposed to be sad. It was sad indeed, but the way they animated that was so funny that it lightened up the mood. Goodbyes are always hard. Always. So the next day, Laura ends up telling the girls about the choice she has to make. Everyone is understandably sad, but Manatsu stands up and tells her that she needs to do what's most important right now. It was so cute when Sungul told her this is a decision for the future and she didn't need to make a decision now. But Laura is sad that would be her doing whatever the witch did. And Laura never really tells the girls what her choice is. But there is the play. In the last scene, the five friends live happy together. But Laura asks them to change so her character would go back to her homeland and become queen. That makes it very clear what her choice is without her having to actually say what her choice is. So we have quick and nice shots of the whole festival before the play actually begins, but the sweetest thing was the scene of the five girls getting ready, all in their costumes, saying this was going to be their last activity together, and Manatsu putting on lipstick right before going in. That was super incredible. And the play itself... Wow. The girls remembering lots of moments from the actual season, how they met, and things they experienced together. Sango's individuality being valued, Minori's poems being mentioned, and also the body switch. And it was also no worth noticing the book Laura was reading, or... Rosalia was reading in the play was called The Papaya. And Asuka's scene was also great with the quarrels they had the whole season, but with them laughing at the end like great friends who got to accept and loved their very different personalities. So the last scene arrives and Laura's character Rosalia starts explaining she needs to go back to become queen. That was such an awesome scene. Irina Hidaka, Laura's voice actor, did a stellar job there. The emotions, the decision in her voice, the little sad nuances of having to go back. Incredible. And at that point on, the girls weren't really acting anymore. We could see Sungo was tear-eyed, Asuka and Milady were super emotional, but Manatsu couldn't really hold it in. When she said Tropicateru and the lipsticks she applied at the start disappeared, my heart broke. The lipstick that is the symbol of motivation, the symbol of getting ready to go ahead and live the present. Not even that could prepare Manatsu for the inevitable goodbye. So we had that scene. Manatsu holding Laura. At that moment, we didn't have Nachi or Hosaria. They were Manatsu and Laura. And Manatsu couldn't hold her emotions back. I, Faruz, I commend you too. What an incredible scene. Wow. Just wow. I cried so much. Everything both of them lived together, everything that this special friendship made blossom, Manatsu doesn't want to let go. And I understand her. I don't want to say goodbye to Tropical Rouge either. Can't it stay here forever with us? 
<laughs> but as I said before, this season can commit itself to making us cry, but it will also lighten up the mood. And that's what they did. When the scenario started falling over Laura, my brain couldn't decide if it would make me cry or laugh. I did both at the same time, I guess. It was so good. This is what Tropical Rouge is all about. Even if your face is full of tears, it will find a way of making you tropicalize. So everyone was laughing, but then the girls got together and sang a beautiful song. But the randomness was not finished. Laura revealing to everyone her real name and her real identity, telling everyone she's a mermaid. I could never see that coming. Never. <laughs> and that was super funny. The disciplined girl checking in and getting that confirmation she isn't crazy. The shocked faces the girls made. Manatsu standing by her. The aquarium lady not surprised at all. That was such a great scene. And it has Laura written all over it. Her reasoning to do that was also very on brand. And that beach scene. How can we not cry? First... We finally know why there's the memory erasing device in Grand Ocean. We've been suspecting this, but it's time for the show to actually tell us. Mermaids live longer than humans, so for them not to suffer with their friendships, a past mermaid created it. So we have a little philosophical debate going on. Would it be better to forget or to suffer, but to retain your memories? All the girls seems to believe in, is in the latter. So they make a vow not to forget Laura and for Laura not to forget them. And Manatsu also gave Laura her lipstick. And Laura's last goodbye to the girls was her signature mermaid jump. That scene appeared in a few episodes, but it's always so beautiful and it's stuck in our minds. So it's a great way of just seeing Laura for the last time. So I guess when Laura's memories were erased, all of what happened while she was on Earth were, was erased too. People's memories of Laura were erased, Laura's items were erased, the cure powers were erased. There was nothing that connected Laura to this life anymore, except the power of friendship. Honestly, that made me super, super surprised. I would never see something like that coming. I believed that Laura would forget, but not the girls. And as I said, there was nothing that was connecting Laura to this life anymore. Except the power of friendship. Manatsu sensed something was missing from her house. The girls noticed that there were five melon ponds. And for Laura, there were some amiss things too, like a message she wrote for herself and also an unknown lipstick. Knowing Laura, I was finding a little bit out of character, her going back to Grand Ocean and just let her memories be erased like that. She can't change the law because she is an apprentice. But still, she wasn't even questioning it. But we can never doubt Laura. Because she had a plan in mind. And that made me so happy. I'm so sorry, Laura, that I doubted you. That made me so happy. And Laura is so smart. Girl. So we see Laura and Manatsu not knowing each other, meeting again at the same spot they did in the first episode. Laura's plan of entrusting the no longer villains her memories since they wouldn't forget anything was super smart. And the way Elda narrated that scene was also super, super cute as well with the doll that connects her to Manatsu in a way. I loved that. And that scene, that last scene, had everything to be a super dramatic tear-jerking moment. But it was not. It was fun. It was funny, it was endearing, it was tropical. It was just like Manatus and Laura's friendship. The memory erasing device just could not erase that strong bond that they had. And they just remembered. And the Aquapod had all of the memories, the pictures, everything they lived together. The memory erasing machine was destroyed with the power of motivation. Everything is back and Manatsu and Laura are ready to tropicalize again. I loved that last scene so much. Both of them kind of fighting each other. Like, how do you know my name, Manatsu? <laughs> like, that was so awesome. And the faces they made, like, what's happening here? And everything just coming into place again. Wow. 
And so the episode comes to an end with the ending song played. So we had like great shots like Queen Apprentice Laura meeting the other girls too. A subtle scene of each of the girls doing what they love. Minori with the big pencil. <laughs> Loved that. Manatsu building a bigger room for the Tropical Club too. Great. We see the villains all happy as well. We even see Butler in there. Poor Butler. Elda was taking care of him. Laura teaching the mermaids about humans and a super creepy queen on the window. That is some Attack on Titan shit right there. Anyways, that was for me an incredible last episode. So a few more considerations. First, I love that they didn't show the girls in the future. It goes against the whole message of Tropical Rouge itself. Even though it would be fun to see, I would like to see, but it's coherent for it not to be shown in the episode. Second is the lack of crossover to the next season. I love seeing it every season and it's a bummer we didn't see Cure Precious to link us to Delicious Party Precure, but there was so much to happen in this episode that they spent time on what actually mattered for the story the Tropical Rouge constructed so far. Anyways, a very solid ending for a very solid season. Tropical Rouge, you will be missed so much. Tropicalizing every week for the past year has been a crazy ride and I loved every single second. What an awesome season we had. I am so, so, so happy. And obviously the Tropical Rouge content in this channel is not over yet. It's far from over. I have so many ideas and so many things that I still want to talk when it comes to Tropical Rouge itself. So we're still gonna dwell more onto this amazing story and to the amazing characters. I really want to do a video on each of the characters, analyzing them and giving my opinion on each of them because I think all five of them were super, super great and super well-crafted as characters. Anyways, guys, this, this was my view on episode 46, the last Tropical Rouge episode. What was yours? Please leave in the comments and let's keep talking. Anyways, just want to take this little time to thank the members of the Magical Cinnamon channel. Everybody who is a member, thank you very, very much for all the support. It has been a crazy and tropical ride and... I am very, very happy and thankful for having you guys with me. Thank you very, very much. And if you've watched Apple now, thank you so much as well. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye-bye.